Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to episode 10, take 3 of our Rich and Idy wedding show. Out of a very wet, Jeffrey's by wet and windy. The, the wind definitely brought the rain. For sure. <laughs> we're very, very glad for that. Yeah, we, also, we also heard that there's some rain in the catchment areas as well. So we hope that some of the dams who need the water drastically will, will get some water as well. Yes. Well, this afternoon we'll be talking wedding dresses. And we are privileged to have Johan Wormerans, a very well-known and respected wedding dress designer and dress designer from the Eastern Cape on, on the Zoom call. But um, before we chat to Johan, we just wanted to elaborate a little bit on some of the tips that we shared in episode two regarding preparations. So we shared quite a few tips on, on how to make sure that you get the best possible photographs from your, from your prepping, if I can call it that. But this afternoon we thought we'd add to it. There's a few that we obviously didn't have time for last time. And the first one is wearing the wedding dress. And I'm going to leave that for Eddie. Yes, um, I'm usually with the bride uh, when it comes to the prepping and Richard's with the groom and uh, photographing the detail, the reception detail. Um, we often, we've never had a bride that didn't have a stunning wedding dress. But I unfortunately had uh, many times where we had a beautiful dress on a normal plastic hanger. Now that, it sounds uh, insipid, yeah. but it is actually very important. Um, think about that when you plan your wedding, especially, especially now that you've got extra time, extra time to plan <laughs> your wedding. Think about the hangers. I mean, there's uh, many companies in the industry that does uh, customized cus custom hangers. Uh, but even a plain wooden hanger is 10 times nicer than a plastic, a plastic hanger. And even Richard can tell you, when he photographs the, the guy's suits, yes. it's, it's as important. To have them on a decent, beautiful hanger. And in any case, uh, uh, most of the wooden hangers are shaped properly so that the suit actually looks better on the hanger than just a normal plastic hanger. It's a broader, it's yeah, a it's wider It's shaped, it's shaped hand, to, yeah. to contour the, the jacket properly. On, the, on so, the shoulders, yeah. Yeah, so that's the one thing. And I think linking onto that is, is making sure that all your jewelry, your garter, your shoes, uh, your perfume, all of those things are readily available. It's beautiful to have those detailed shots taken beforehand. It makes for a nice extra page in the album, you know, just to yes. show all that detail. The same applies for the guys, um, whatever detail there is in terms of a watch, um, aftershave, uh, maybe cufflinks or things like that. Uh, just make sure they're there. And make sure they're clean. Yes. That, I mean, no fingerprints. Look, we, we will always check it, but it is, it is actually, it, it makes for us a, a, a just a little bit easier when everything is neat and clean and ready to shoot. We have limited time yes. and, uh, and the time going up to, uh, leading uh, up to the yeah, wedding. Yeah, especially before the wedding ceremony. And it, we often say, would you rather have us photograph things or would you want us to move things around and clean things? So I think our time is better spent, all photographers' time is better spent photographing, actually photographing things than sorting, than sorting things out. Yeah. So making sure that it's all ready and it's at the right place just makes things so much nicer. That, that is why you have a, a maid of honor and a best man. And a best man. And they are actually, it's actually their duty to make sure that things are ready. you um, in the day and yeah, with everything. And I think on the shoes, both for the bride and for the groom, yes. it's important that the shoes are new to remove the price tags and the stickers from the bottom. From the sole. Yes, from the sole. So And make sure it's clean after you yes. remove it because a lot of times you you had the price, you, you took Pulled the price off. off you've got, just but got a torn just, sticker. Just that white yes. that's left and it sounds so stupid, but it makes it really makes it the photo. And and people like to say you can Photoshop that, but you can't always. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to Photoshop just a sticker out of a place, depending on what the setting is. So, And it's more time. It's something yeah. that could have very easily been done. And remember, it's not just us that's going to see it in the photographs. If you're going to be kneeling or anything like that or sitting, everyone's going to see those stickers. So just remove them before. And yeah, except thing. for if you, do, uh, if you want to write something on your shoe. No, that's a different I, story, but so not a half-torn price tag. Yeah, so. definitely. And I think then I just mentioned cufflinks yeah. of the guys. So with the cufflinks, if, if there's cufflinks as a gift, either from the bride or maybe from a family member, make sure the shirt can actually accommodate cufflinks. You won't believe how many times I've seen guys 30 minutes before the ceremony rip out knives and things and trying to cut holes and 
slits and things into, into shirts so that the cufflinks can fit. It's a little thing to check the day before when you buy the shirt, make sure that the shirt can actually accommodate the cufflinks. The and the same thing is with um, kruisbande. Um, or suspenders or, or braces, yeah. Yeah, you must fit it beforehand. If it's still in the packets... Well, you can re it, it if you want, but yeah, fit it. Yeah, but just fit it and yeah. make sure that you know how the little gadget works that, that attaches. That clips onto the belt, yeah. Uh, often the guys don't have a clue and, and you can ask Richard, they end up not using it. Yeah, I think, it, I think in the last, I would say in the last two years, there's probably about three or four weddings where suspenders or braces or whatever you want to call them were part of the groom's attire or part of their gift packs. And in half of those cases, they didn't even wear it because it was a schlep for them to size them and they couldn't figure out the clips and they left it to number 99 just before they had to leave for the ceremony yeah. and then they, they decided not to wear it. So if you're going to do the effort of, of, of gifting it to them, make sure they can use it and they size it beforehand. So. Yes. Um, I think another thing on the groom side is the tie. So if you are going to be wearing a cravat or a bow tie, even a normal tie, you'll be surprised sometimes a lot of us don't wear ties anymore, you know, to work. So people forget how to tie them and a cravat, I think in the last two years I probably googled the, the tutorial about 10 times at a wedding to show them how to tie the cravat. So those are the sort of things that you can do the morning of a wedding, make sure it's tied. Uh, and, and if it's a bow tie, size it properly yes. and make sure the collar of the shirt accommodate. can accommodate it um, and it looks neat with it because often it's a tiny collar of a bow tie and then you've got the adjustment mechanism sitting on the side. So just try all of those things on beforehand. Yes. Don't leave them in the packaging brand new and only open them 30 minutes before the wedding because that happens more often than not with guys especially, where the things get literally opened for the first time 30 minutes before the wedding and it doesn't fit or it doesn't work. And I mean, I think you've also had the, the days where there were shirts coming out of packages that wasn't oh, Yes, it wasn't ironed. ironed. Yeah, I the mean, shirts are still in the original packaging with all their clips and then uh, their things. So take them out beforehand, hang them up, have them the steam, steamed or ironed or whatever the, whatever you decide to do. It's a little small thing, but it makes a big difference. And I mean, you can have a groom in the best looking suit with a shirt that's not properly ironed and you will see those oh, creases. And it's, it's not something you're gonna Photoshop out, believe no. me. So a little bit of preparation and it's gonna go a long way to make sure the photos are, are, are looking stunning. And the person, not just the photos, again, I think we've said it in one of the previous episodes, everything shouldn't be about the photographs. Yeah. But remember, if we see it, all the other guests are seeing it as exactly. well. Exactly. So if a shirt isn't ironed, it's not just the photos that's going to capture that, but every it's single guest will see that that yeah. shirt isn't ironed. Um, and on, on that note, with um, we are going to talk to Johan just now. Um, Johan has a service that I know he often um, comes and dress the bride. I think 99% yeah. of the time he will dress the bride. Um, yeah. not, not all the designers do that. And... I have often seen with the girls when they get into their dress that no one that's helping them get dressed um, can button up the small buttons. I mean, often the, the, the ladies have their nails done. It's a little bit longer um, and you're not used to working with those nails. And even with short nails, I don't even think you can do that little fine buttons with, a, with short nails. You need a tool for it. I have a little tool with you. I, I would recommend a little yickle uh, Nault. I don't know what it's called in English, but it's a ask, nault. I think the best is to speak to your wedding dress designer. I think that's the sort of thing that you need to clarify with your dress designer. Make sure that when you leave with your wedding dress on the day, that you have the necessary tools to button up that without causing any more stress. Because yes. all of these things are happening sometimes minutes, minutes before, before the ceremony to start. And if someone's going to start struggling and they don't have the right tools, it tends to push up the stress level. Yes. And I mean, we want everyone to enjoy their wedding day. We want them to be relaxed on their wedding day. So make sure you've got the right equipment and you tried and tested everything beforehand. It's the same as us. We don't buy a new piece of gear and open it up on the wedding and then no. try it out. It gets tested and it gets tried beforehand. So yes. same applies for wedding attire. Yes. Okay, so is that our tips for the day? I think so. I think, it's, I think we've spoken enough. It's now time to hear from you on. Yes, I, I think that what we must do is we must um, do a compilation we will, one we will episode do, we will of do the go-to bag. Yeah. We will call it the go-to bag, the wedding go-to bag, and then we'll stipulate things that we, that, can be, yeah, that we really think is things that, that, that is crucial for the day of the wedding. Yes. We'll, we promise we'll do that. 
Okay, enough about this. Um, we're going to introduce Johan. Um, he is a, a wedding designer in, in Port Elizabeth. Yes. Um, very well known designer. Um, over to Johan then. Hi, Johan. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're very excited to have you as a guest today on our program, the Regen ID Wedding Show. And as one of the more uh, renowned designers in our region, um, it is an absolute honor to have you today as a guest. Um, Johan, would you, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us how you got into the, the industry of designing? Well, thank you for having me. And yeah, under these circumstances, a very different way of meeting. Um, well, it was basically, initially I studied psychology and then I went into designing after that. So that's how I got into it. But it's always um, been a passion. Yuan, um, that makes, uh, now it's the first time that, that I've heard it. It makes absolute sense. Not a lot of people heard, know that. Yes. You've, <laughs> you've got a calmness that you bring to a wedding. And yes, it, it makes sense now. Um, so when, when did you start in the wedding industry per se? Um, it was in 99, yeah, 1999. I got into making more formal wedding gowns. I, I always used to do it as a hobby, but then in 99, I went into it full time. Yeah, that's, that's 21 years of wedding dresses. I mean, that's yes. an incredible long oh. time. Anniversary. Yes. I am I am officially a grown up in the industry. Yes. <laughs> in the industry. We we met in nineteen ninety nine. So it was obviously a great year. <laughs> it was a good year. <laughs> and Juan, is it only do you only um specialize in wedding gowns or is there um other designs that you also do specifically concerning the wedding day? Um, I do the whole range from flower girls to mother of the bride, mother of the groom, bridesmaids. Um, so, and then some wedding guests as well. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we do the whole array of, of bridal attire. Um, Johan, what was the biggest um, job thus far that you had for a wedding? The, like the most dresses or the most... Challenging. Yeah, most challenging. I think, well, I think every wedding is a challenge on its own um, because you are dealing with a person's very special day. Um, so I, I think every, every wedding to me is like a challenge, not, not necessarily in a bad way. Um, but, but a challenge because the pressure's on. I mean, you, you would also know, um, I always say to my clients, especially getting ready to, to get married, I always say have respect for your photographers as well um, and be on time for them because in the end, my job is done by the time I dress her uh, but the photographer sells a promise in a bottle. So if you don't have enough time, don't complain that your photographers didn't get the photos you wanted. So, yeah, that's why I say every wedding is a challenge and it comes with its own challenges every week. Um, it is very nice, especially from a, a, another person in the industry to actually hear that. Um, because it is very important for us as photographers to have time. And that's why we, we often um, try to, to influence the, the client or the bride in, her, um, in preparing for a time, in a time schedule. Yeah, it's a timeline. So I think it's a very important point because they all, they all see these photographs of the, of the brides in their stunning wedding gowns. And you, you can't really do photographs like that if you've got 10 minutes. Um, you need a little bit of time to set it up and to get everything right. And, and I think that's one of the challenges of the photography industry is people often say, I only need one or two photos. I had it the other day as well. You know, we only need one or two photos, but 
it's not just pick up the camera, take two shots, and you've got those two. You know, it takes time to get people setup. comfortable, to get the setup yeah. correct, to get the light correct. So it's an awesome point that you bring up. I mean, the timeline is imperative, and, and we've highlighted a few times. Yeah, and what I always say to the brides, you also get the extreme of the spectrum as well, where they are so strict. It's like 8 a.m., I'm going to have breakfast, that kind of thing. And I also want to take a red mark and go through that schedule because things doesn't always run on time, but there are things that you need to get sorted so that your photos will, but it's, it's your memories that last. Yeah. So, I mean, really there, um, I'm very adamant to, to in, in the run up to the weddings, to prep my girls to be ready on time at least an hour before you have to leave for the venue um, so that your photographers have enough time. Uh, Johan, I think you've, you've raised a very valid point there with, uh, where you say starting 8 o'clock. We had an uh, instance a few years ago where there was a program uh, prepared for the day for everyone that was to the minute, like on a proper, I think, I think um, a lot of project managers will be put to shame by this program that was handed to all the vendors. And it was prepared by the bride with minute accuracy, only for her to arrive an hour late to the start of the program. So that, I mean, that's why we often say, you know, the best programs in the world doesn't help if you don't stick to them, you know. So, so. And, and what I'm always, always saying to, to my clients as well, I'm, I, I like to be very realistic with them. Um, and I, they always say, oh, yeah, you give such good advice, which is, which is fine. Um, you should write a book. And I'm going like, then it should, it, it will only have a cover. If you write the perfect wedding book, it will just have a cover. <laughs> because things go wrong um, on the day. And I mean, there, the bride was half an hour late or an hour late. Um, so you can't really... But, but I just think to have a more or less kind of schedule always works very well. We totally agree. Hmm. Johan, okay, we've been fortunate enough to have done a, a few weddings where you were the designer. Can you tell the viewers a little bit more about the, the service that you actually give on the day of the wedding? Um, on the day of the wedding, I... Well, it's basically a my myself being very nosy and a bit of a control freak um, that I dress the brides myself. So I'm there to see that she gets into a dress perfectly, to assist with putting the veil on, stuff like that. Even if they try on the dress several times and you have bridesmaids there on the day, people get rattled and then you have a stressed bride. So I like to just, just make the day as comfortable as possible. And it sets the bride at ease to know that I'm there. Um, I mean, once she's in the dress, my job is done, but it's just, uh, I'm there. Um, I have fixed many a bouquet and put many balloons on cars as well. But um, yeah. I'm, I'm just there to, to keep a bit of sanity when everything else is falling apart around them. Totally, totally. Uh, yeah. And I, I also want to ask about your timeline. Um, what is your turnaround time? Um, how much time does a bride or even the entire bridal party, because we know you do the, 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 the bride's dresses, the bridesmaid's dresses, the mom and mom of the bride and groom and the whole guests, entire, as and guests. Um, what is your turnaround time if, if we can if you can talk to future clients uh, well i i like to tell the clients to get in as early as possible um you have seasonal stuff happening this year is going to be a complete new uh kind of it's uncharted um, at the moment, uh, you get some months where matric farewells are very uh, 
popular. So I like to get my brides. I love doing bridal wears. So I like to get them in as early as possible, even though brides always want to lose weight. They always want to be skinnier. And, uh, you know, so the closer the time we, we start doing the, the dress, uh, the better for the fit of the garment. But um, it, to, to get the booking in as soon as they, they set a date or move a date in this case. <laughs> yes, in this case. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to ask, what, yeah. what, what was sort of your highlight of your career as a, as a wedding dressmaker? I know you've highlighted that every weekend is special. And I mean, I think we agree. We approach every wedding the same way that that's, that's going to be, we always say this is going to be the best photos ever. But I mean, was there a specific highlight for you in your career? If you think back on the 21 years? Yeah, there, yeah, there were several, um, and it's going to be like sort of cliche and like I've said it, but but every weekend to me is a highlight, and it's really it's it's special because every client is different, um, and you do get the brides uh, that you are glad to see walk down the aisle to say thank you. Um, and then you get the, the, the brides that really they become your friends and they they friends for life. So every weekend to me is special. You, t you, you touched about uh, on the topic of uncharted territory. Um, we follow your career as well. Um, is there anything that you are doing now that you never thought <laughs> you would get your hands on? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I never thought, never have I ever thought I would be making face masks. Um, yeah, and that, that's been quite, quite a challenge in itself. And yeah, people are, yeah, they're buying into completely different stuff. Um, it's not just your normal mask. It's mask with Swarovski crystals on it and lace work on it. So it's, it's become quite a fashion statement. And I, we will definitely make sure to, um, to, to attach links underneath because I know um, you've got a, almost like a soul seller um, in, in PE, uh, it's, I think it's Charlotte Pharmacy. Yes, yes, that's, Charlotte that's, Pharmacy. That's uh, selling your products. And I've been following it for a while on, on social media. And I can really, really recommend to all the ladies out there. Who, I'm, a, I'm a girl that loves to wear um, lipstick. <laughs> and, and if you cannot wear lipstick and you have to go out, a bling mask is definitely second best. And I've seen your, your designs. It is beautiful. And, and we can just help you. Uh, all the best of luck to you with that. It, we know it's not a normal thing to do. We never thought we would have a meeting on Zoom with you. We would rather have you in our house with us or shooting weddings. Um, yeah. But it's things good. is different now. Yeah, I've, I've, on that point, I've, I saw a post on Facebook the other day for a wedding that took place recently in India or, or some country around there, where obviously they're allowed to have weddings, but, yes. but the, the, the bridal party, everyone was wearing masks. And all of the masks were, were, were properly designed and custom made, like you're saying. So I think going forward, like we are treading into the live streaming area to, to assist with being able to live stream a wedding, if not all the guests can attend. I think in your side, I mean, a mask is probably for the next few months or year, probably going to be part of a wedding dress, a mask that fits their attire. You know, so we don't know. Like, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and like I said to somebody the other day, a bride that had to postpone a wedding, I said, you know what, um, this time sort of made it easier for brides um, to, to think about wedding favors. You have a mask made for every guest in your wedding colors. If you can't control anything, you at least can control the mask they're wearing. I love that idea. That is awesome. I mean, we all know wedding favors are very expensive and often they get put in a, in a drawer 
only for you to sort out your drawer a year later and throw it away. I'm yes. sorry to say, but it does yeah. happen. But yeah. this is a practical thing. It's awesome. Yeah, very good idea. <laughs> you coined it. <laughs> <laughs> Yuan, um, if there's anything else that you would um, like to tell the viewers um, that we didn't ask you, is there something? Gen general advice general for a new bride, groom? Yeah, what I, I normally say to my brides is um, we get very caught up in um, what the media is showing us. We all watch Say Yes to the Dress, um, those kind of TV shows. Um, I always say to my brides, be a clean slate. You, we all know what we love and what you like to wear. So don't go and try on 50,000 dresses. It's just going to confuse you. Uh, those dresses aren't custom made for you. Uh, so you'll put something on that you would probably look amazing in, but because it doesn't fit you correctly, you put off the design. So be a clean slate. And my golden rule is always be a better version of yourself walking down that aisle not a different version of yourself. Good advice. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an awesome tip. Be yes. yourself. Be unique and, and, yes. and find oh. a way to stand out. Yeah. That's it. Awesome. Well, Johan, thank you very much for your time. I mean, it was a pleasure talking to you. And I think we really, really hope that the next time we see you, it's actually in person at a wedding where we yeah. photograph with the bride and group and not via Zoom. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we cannot Yeah, we're we waiting. So. Thank you very much, Johan. We appreciate Thank your time. You. you know you're busy. You can go on designing the most beautiful masks now and let's hope soon we all can be back in our industry. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be soon. I'm positive. We also believe that. Thank you very much, Yuan. We appreciate your time and it was really lovely seeing you, um, seeing you virtually on Zoom. And we cannot wait to do the next wedding with you in real life after lockdown. Um, I, don't, I, I think everyone cannot wait, all yes. our, our viewers. For everyone. So, Yuan, great. Thanks for chatting. And, and I think um, you, you render an incredible service to the brides. I think part of why we're doing this is to help share tips and tricks with all the brides and grooms out there in terms of how to make their wedding day easier and to remove stress. And I think for most brides, the knowledge of having their designer there on the wedding day just takes away all of that stress. If there's yeah. anything wrong with a dress, you can fix it right there and then. So I think that's incredible. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, just from our side, remember to subscribe. The subscribe button will be down here. <laughs> and remember... When we get to a thousand subscribers, we'll be giving away a Rigen 80 family lifestyle or couple shoot to the value of 3,000 rands. All you have to do is subscribe and see you again in the next episode. Keep warm. Cheers. One moment. Okay, I found this on the web for see you again in the next episode. Check it out. See you again to where she did it. Wiz Khalifa, see you again for the <laughs> Charlie Pepper Fisher video. Thank you, Siri. Now we can really say goodbye. Yes, um, we're never alone when you've got Siri. <laughs> See you in the next Cheers. episode.